Welcome back to another adventure, and finally we've made it up to the west of Scotland and the Outer Hebrides. Even though the trip was a blast, it didn't go completely smoothly. Ferries, wildlife, inclement weather, and lots of beautiful views along the way. I hope you enjoy this one, so let's get cracking. So here we are, up in Glencoe, 560 miles from home, and if you did it in one go, it's a nine and a half hour drive, and probably about 12 in Boris. After a beautifully sunny day yesterday, you can see last night we had a dump of snow. So I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear me all that well, because it's very windy. Nope, you definitely can't hear me. All I'm saying is here that we're at the Glen Etive River, and we're going to head down the famous Skyfall Road to see the James Bond spot. Amazing to see the snow down on the ground as well, so we're going to head down here. As you can see, as you get lower and lower down this road, the altitude actually decreases, and we were actually below the point of the snow. As a lifelong fan of the Bond films, I was quite excited to come to this spot, but as you'll see up on the left, one of the campers was still asleep there, unfortunately, at 11am, which means we couldn't get the famous shot just at the right spot, so I just had to carry on a little bit further to a pull-in to get a nice photo. I think this will do, obviously it's not accurate, but here is my shot. I still think it works pretty well, I quite like that it's not exactly like the frame from the film. Some people do replicate it perfectly, but I'm happy with mine. Let's carry on down to the waterfall. If you make your way down that road just a tiny bit more, you're met with a lovely wooden bridge over an incredible waterfall. It's a beautiful scene perched between the snow-capped mountains, and while we were there, there was not a single soul in sight. And although I could have spent a lot longer there, we had a ferry to catch and an itinerary to stick to. So making our way out of Glenative, back into the valley full of deep snow, and then descending back down through the windy roads into Glencoe, where we're going to be heading up to Malague to catch the ferry over to the Isle of Uist for a few days. The road takes you through Fort William along some incredible winding roads that pass the Glen Finnan Viaduct which is featured in the Harry Potter films and then out to the coast. It's a beautiful road to do as a commute. It takes about an hour and a half and it's just a joy to drive. So we just parked up here in Malague and I just thought I'd get the bonnet up to do a bit of a fluid check. Oil's about halfway, so I'm gonna put a uh, bit in there. It's been like that for a little while, so just put half a liter in. I'm gonna check the coolant now. I'm just, uh, just basically waiting here for the ferry. There's gonna be some really bad weather over the next few days, so they've um, changed the schedule. It was meant to leave at, I think, two, and now it's gonna leave at five. So we've got a bit more time to do. That's why we did that Skyfall Road. And um, But yeah, this is a really lovely spot. I'm looking forward to getting on the ferry. Haven't been on one for a little while, especially not to any of the uh, Hebrides, which is really cool. But um, for now, just gonna check this over and uh, make sure that everything's okay. So after a little while of waiting, it's our turn to get onto the ferry. This one is called MV Lord of the Isles, and there is some pretty inclement weather, as I mentioned earlier, coming. But as it's quite a big ferry, I think we'll be absolutely fine. And the shop is also open, beer and spirits. The crossing was the longest of our trip at three and a half hours and actually when it came to it wasn't all that uh, rocky at all. I don't get seasick but Sophie does and she wasn't affected so you know it's a smooth journey. Something about going on a ferry on a trip like this just makes it an adventure. I love the feeling of it, I'm not sure if it's just me but even if it's just going over to Cornwall from home I love just stepping on a ferry, it just makes it that little bit more special. With three and a half hours under our belt, it's time to get back in the car and onto Uist in the dark. A 
as you can see we weren't greeted with the best of weather very scottish very hebridean driving rain towards the windscreen as we were trying to find a spot for the night There's something about turning up in the dark to a completely new place, a new island, making your way through farmland and just relying on a park for night spot that makes it feel a little bit daunting. It was about this sort of brightness you can see now. Sorry for the terrible footage, but we uh, managed to pull up by the side of the beach using this farm track that took you right out to the coast. And then we we're gonna park up for the night, try and relax and get some sleep. So we hunkered down for the night with the wind and the rain battering the side of the vehicle. It was time to make a couple of hot chocolates, some noodles, watch some things on the iPad and then start to head to bed. After a long day of travelling, the sleep was well deserved and excitement was there for the day ahead. Unfortunately, the wind didn't let up for the entire night. Not a huge amount of sleep was gotten, but it was definitely worth it to wake up in this beautiful spot, just a few meters above the beach, and I'm ready to go and explore. The winds are still high as you can hear, and it's quite a gloomy day, but we are just so happy to be here and it to look this beautiful. Right, so now it's even the slightest bit calm. I've just come down under a big sort of dune here. And I actually might cook some breakfast here because it's so, so windy up there. I can hardly even stand up. I just opened the door to the front of the car and my jacket flew away. I had to run like 50 meters away to just go and get it back. So just recapping on last night, um, obviously turned up here sort of semi-dark, sort of quite difficult to gauge what it's like. It's always a bit daunting turning up to a new island and a new spot in the dark going through a farm and coming here. But it's completely worth it. You can see this in the morning and this is why I love the Hebrides. It reminds me of Tyree where I've been a couple of times and it's absolutely amazing. It's now 50 mile an hour wind out there, but it's absolutely beautiful as you can see. Not cold today, but just very windy. Um, we were buffeting around all night in torrential rain, but we had a, a good time and it's uh, really exciting. Well, you know it's a windy day when your porridge starts flying away and you can hardly eat it. So next up, what you can see me doing here is opening up the alley boxes and getting out the tire deflator. I've had them up at 50 for the motorway and for the roads up to here, I'm gonna lower them down to about 30, 35, roughly as the tire deflator is very inaccurate, as I'm, we're gonna be doing a lot of uh, bits of off-road, some mud, grass, uh, sand, and I just don't wanna tear anything up and it also makes the journey a lot nicer and more smooth. This beach that we're staying on is actually 20 miles long on the west side of Uist, so we thought we'd head up to another spot we saw in Park for Night, and through the farms we went, not a person in sight, and this whole peninsula, which was much bigger than I thought, was completely deserted. So we went up here, and we're gonna go for a little walk on the beach. Sophie lost her hat, which is actually mine. It blew in the way in the wind and we went back and found it, thankfully. What I'm gonna be doing is leaving on the sound of the tearing wind going past the microphone to give you a bit of a reality of how it actually was. This trip will bring sun and storms and it's just a reality of how Scotland is. Lots of people commented on my Instagram and said, this is exactly how it is and I know it. You wait five minutes and the weather will change. Now we can head off to the next spot up the peninsula, have a look there as well. Perched on the end of this small peninsula was an old gun mount, which is always nice to see a bit of history. And we we're always looking out for otters, which we thought we saw, but it was this friendly seal, which is just as good. Always nice to see those on the Hebrides. With some exploring around the lower part of the island done and it being quite flat and just a bit like this, we passed some time, had some lunch, went for another walk and now it's time to go to our next campsite, which is Moorcroft Holidays.
So for today we decided to come to this campsite, um, sort of just on higher standing with electrical hookup as well. They've got laundry, they've got nice showers and loos and everything like that. And seeing as there's 65 mile an hour gust today, I thought, thought that it's, those few luxuries would be nice to um, sort of have, even though there's no real shelter. Um, we did go out to the beach a couple of times as you saw, um, but it feels like a bit of a write-off. We got here at about two and uh, we're going to be here for the whole day, but sort of need to hunker down and sort of get out of the wind because every time you go out you almost fall over but um what we're going to do is just sit in here uh make some food watch some films and uh sort of see how tomorrow is but i think monday is going to be the day our ferry was cancelled for tomorrow to harris so we'll see how we go Thankfully we managed to park this direction into the wind so you can actually cook from outside the vehicle. Sophie's preparing some chicken burgers and then we're going to head to bed and try and escape the wind. As you can imagine there's only so much sheltering you can do so we thought the next day we'd go for a walk on the beach no matter the weather. Okay, right. <laughs> Even though it's a beautiful spot, the wind and rain is completely sideways. We've got 60 mile an hour gusts still. We're trying to make the most of a bit of a walk out on the beach. It's absolutely beautiful. So this is Clacken Stands. So wish us luck for a little walk. An absolutely beautiful beach on any day. White sand and crystal clear blue waters, better than any Cornish beach, I'd say. It's perched at the very top of North Uist, and it's a beautiful place to go and visit. And where we parked up is actually a camping spot with a donation for the night. We saw loads of wildlife on our trip, and these gannets were just one of them, hunting very close to the shore. Yes, I was wearing a raincoat, but unfortunately I was also wearing jeans. They got so wet and sandy, I may as well jumped into the sea. So I had to swap them over as we got back into the car to seek some shelter. And as we head back to the campsite, on the way home, we managed to see a short-eared owl. Unfortunately, struggling to fly in these strong winds, but lovely to see. Monday morning brought blue skies, less wind, and as promised, the ferries were still running. So we got up early and head over to the ferry port. You know how it works, sod's law. Unfortunately, we didn't see any otters by the side of the road in any of the lochs, but we did see this group of deer just by the side of the road and luckily got to catch a glimpse of another short-eared owl just as we're heading there, really lucky to see just before the ferry. can't tell you how nice it is to sit inside with the sun blaring through the windows and seeing Harris up in the distance. This short ferry ride was just an hour and the wind was nice and calm so we didn't get rocked around too much. Before long it was time to head back down to the cars and as Boris was at the front of the queue I went down early to make sure it started and didn't block everyone on the boat. Disembarking the ferry in South Harris, I feel like the first port of call is going to have to be Luskentire Beach. Let's make our way along these lovely roads, beautiful coastlines. I would say it almost looks like Scandinavia. Now we're on this winding road which is the final stretch into the beach and I think we're going to be passing a lovely camp spot that you might see a little bit later. Luskentire is widely considered as one of the best beaches in Harris and one of the most stunning in the UK. It's backed by incredible mountains in the distance and it's opposite a small island called Taransay. It is inhabited by people but they did film a reality show about 24 years ago. I have actually been here about five years ago in slightly different weather in January with Ben Fogel filming his talk he did on the beach, Tales from the Wilderness. It really is a stunning beach to visit, long expanses of sand, you can walk as far as you want. It's surrounded by camping spots, I think the thing that really makes it is the mountains in the distance. It's just completely dramatic and beautiful. 
So after that, we got back in the car, hit the road, and set some points on the map to try and find some camp spots. We ended up going through the mountains of this incredible road in the sunshine and parked up on a spot on the side of the road, which we thought would look very nice, but unfortunately was a bit too windy and we did have one in mind. Although it did make a good lunch spot and it was very beautiful as well. With a spot of lunch and a nice view taken in, it was time to head down to Tarbot to the Harris Tweed shop. Even though there were a few nice spots on our search for wild camp areas, unfortunately nothing was as good as what we saw earlier just on the road into Luskin Tyre as I mentioned before. We're going to pull up here as it's actually a West Harris Council area which you're allowed to camp at. You donate £5 and it's beautiful overlooking the water here. For me, I reckon Harris is definitely the one. Uh, US was cool. Um, I think the wind and the uh, weather definitely affected it for us. US, I'm sure, would be absolutely fantastic in the summer with those deserted beaches, amazing waters, and it's definitely less touristy. I'm sure it won't be as busy. But for me, as I mentioned before, Harris is definitely the one. Let's enjoy this spot while we're here. I'm glad we just went for a walk as we got here as the tide is coming in at a rate of knots. You can actually see it pouring in in front of you and you have to be heading back to the car pretty quickly. I did a little time lapse to show just how quick it heads in. It's going to be really hard to try and explain the difference between this evening and the ones that preceded it. The wind has completely died down, we've finished our dinner, we've had a walk on the beach, and now it's time to watch the sky turn pink and the sun set below the horizon and head to bed. Good morning from one of probably my top three favourite ever camp spots out here in uh, the middle of nowhere in Harris. You'd have seen us pull up here last night, but I just thought I'd speak a little bit about it this morning because I just don't know why, but it's definitely in my top three ever camp spots. Um, just the stillness of it last night, I think maybe the wind from the last few days affected it. But just being here over the water when the tide comes in, watching the sunset as you saw, uh, it's just incredible looking out from the uh, windscreen down the valley and then back through the door at this sort of little archipelago area. It looks like Sweden. It's absolutely beautiful. I just loved it here. It's um, just a magical spot and it just has something that you can't really explain, which makes it one of my favourites. I thought actually it wasn't going to be so good because you're on a road here, but that quietens down. So it's probably after 7pm, three cars, and then at 8.30 when people go to work, there's another view but it's absolutely incredible how quiet it is. Birds everywhere. Still yet to see an otter, but we had a really good night's sleep. And unfortunately, we thought it was gonna be a really still and sunny day, but it's uh, been raining. We woke up to rain, which is absolutely fine. It's better than gale force winds, but um, it's looking like it might clear off and we might have a good day.
So after a nice cook up, a slow wake up and a cup of coffee, it was time to hit the road out of Tarbert and to Stornoway. We did park up near the centre of town, but unfortunately it wasn't for us, so we quickly got out of there, went to the Woodland Cafe for some lunch and head out to the castle for a walk around the grounds. There's a nice short walk up from the car park under the bridge and while we were up there we spotted these baby rabbits. I didn't film all too much of this short trip and before long it was time to head back down to our normal camp spot. While we're on the way, I remembered a little tip from Robert Evolutionary 4x4 who had visited the island before and he said there's a beach that is well worth visiting. I'm so glad we changed our mind and head there because this incredible road you're about to see takes about half an hour to get there and it's beautiful the whole way across. So I'm just going to be quiet and let you see the views on the way there. Pitchard is the name of the beach that I don't want to pronounce. It's an incredible spot at the end of that long winding road. It's over towards the west hand side of Harris. There was quite a few people here when we got there. There's a building there with facilities, fresh water, showers, loos and even vending machines. Despite it being quite crowded, it's still an incredible spot to go to. And please don't let the sun and your eyes deceive you. It's still freezing cold and windy and the sea is even colder. As you can see in the background there, there's someone going in and we had the crazy idea to do it too. I didn't mean to time lapse it, but it did end up being quite a fun shot anyway. It was absolutely freezing and we had to come out straight away. How did you find it though? Um, it was cold, but we didn't stay in very long. And enjoyable though? Yeah, that felt better afterwards. Uh, and we're the only people that did it apart from a guy that did it with his shorts on and his jumper and he thought he was very cool but just to clarify we didn't skinny it <laughs> i tried to but no one would know the difference <laughs> the blue sky and having a cold water dip really lifted our spirits after the gloomy last few days it's time to head back up to boris to cook some food for the evening but on the way back we couldn't help but admire this beautiful 130 with the camper on the back and since this trip I've got in touch with the owner of it he said hello and that he's doing a lot of travelling in it okay keep going go 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 stop that's it It didn't crash it, which is good. I like last time. As the day drew to a close, we sat and admired the evening sunshine, and I'm glad we did because the next day we got back to normal Scottish conditions of wind and rain. One of the special bits for me about camping is sheltering away from the conditions inside. Here, I'm making up some porridge in the morning and watching a bit of YouTube and Freddie Dobbs on the iPad. We did start the two kilometre hike up to the Eagles Observatory, but unfortunately I wasn't dressed for it. The weather came in, we turned around and would like to go back another day. Today is our final day on Harris and we're getting the ferry in a little bit, but before then we're gonna try and make the most of those rainy conditions and we'll visit the Harris distillery that makes the gin and whiskey and take a little look around the village. Once again, due to adverse conditions, unfortunately our ferry was delayed. I think we sat in the queue for about an hour and 45 minutes, so it did feel nice to finally get onto the ferry and watch that nose cone go down. 
It's amazing views leaving Tarbot there and we've got another hour and a half ferry journey in slightly inclement weather. As I mentioned earlier, thankfully I don't get seasick and I'm glad I don't because the journey was very rough and as you can see the bow waves were hitting the window. Unfortunately Sophie did get seasick and we went to the back of the boat and waited for it all to blow over. So with that crossing under our belts it's time to get back into Boris, off the ferry and onto Skye where we've planned a few days ahead of us. And unfortunately that's where our trip turned around a little bit. The weather just didn't end. Our campsite was too far to get to, we tried a few wild camp spots that night and ultimately in the dark and in the storm winds and rain we head to Fort William to stay in a Premier Inn for the night. It wasn't a decision that we made lightly and we did go whatever we're going to do we're going to have a good time and also we want to come back here in the future and we'll incorporate Sky into that journey as well. But for now we're going to be a positive and have a nice night in a hotel. We ended up driving through the night. Here you can see it says about three hours, but ignore that, it felt like 17. We woke up in Fort William, which we had been to just a few days before as it's so close to Glencoe. We head out to get some new trousers for me and saw this ice cream place on the way through with Defender bonnets as canopies. We said we'd make the most of the trip still and here we are heading off out of Fort William across the country over towards the Cairngorms with the end result of heading to Pitlockery and finding a campsite. But on the way we stopped off at this beautiful point called Lagan Dam. Offloading so much water because there's been so much rain overnight I can't imagine the force that's coming out of that thing. So back onto the road we went, following this winding road along the side of the loch and finally ended up at the Falls of Brewer that Sophie found and it's probably one of my favourite spots of the entire trip. Nestled behind a shopping mecca of House of Brewer, you would hardly know that these are here. A two mile round walk up and down this amazing valley, joined by two old stone bridges. Perhaps not one of the most wild spots we went to on this trip, but it definitely wasn't busy when we went there. There were a few walkers that were very friendly and a couple of people doing some co-steering down in the water. Back in the car we went and southwards we are heading and with that it marks our return journey home but we are far from it yet. We are going to be heading just outside of Glasgow to a campsite we stayed at on the way up called Being Glass and it's probably one of our favourites of the trip. One of those sort of special places, really friendly feeling and as you'll see it also has a pub. This campsite has recently just reopened and we're really happy we found it. Perched just on the Hebridean Way, there are lots of backpackers here and also nice campers as well. We're just going to be cooking up our final meal for the trip and enjoying it as the sun goes down. To have access to a pub like this on site is absolutely brilliant. It's open late and the locals even come here as well. We've sat down, played cards and made good friends with the table next to us. You can tell why we like it so much. Two weeks away, eight in Boris, four in hotels and half of those spent in Hurricane. We've had an absolute blast and now let's take a look at what we did before you joined us. This trip has been planned for about a year and a half in advance and we finally managed to get up here to Glencoe where we got married on the Glenative Road the day before you joined us. We had a sunny morning which is absolutely unbelievable as the day before it was sideways rain and the day after as you saw a snow blizzard came through. 
all in all we've had a fantastic time on this trip we've had every single weather thrown at us but we've managed to have a great time nevertheless a couple of days before we got to Glencoe we were passing through Glasgow and if you're following on my Instagram you would have seen me broke down just on the A82 outside of Glasgow and it was a very daunting moment. We almost had to book a hire car and ditch Boris at a garage in Glasgow but at the last moment I found an incredible garage called The Yard run by a guy called Lenny who is an absolute legend. He managed to find the problem and fix it very quickly. It was something very simple that I didn't manage to find myself and without him we wouldn't be there so a huge thanks to him and if you do get a chance to either follow him on instagram or head up to helensborough near glasgow yourself i'd definitely check in there i hope you enjoyed following along on the journey we had a fantastic trip thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one